Today I will show you how to clone, paint and paste something in a perspective. So let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Did you ever try to clone or paint something in a perspective? Well, there is an easy way in Photoshop to do that and it's called the vanishing point filter. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. Alright guys, this is the first image for today and I shoot this metro station when I was in Berlin doing some job for a client. And actually I used this image for a photo story called Berlin Mystery and you can find that on my website, the link is down there in the description. And I will show you really quickly, this is the same image but a few seconds later the train already passed by and I put this guy in the scene with myself and there are a few more images of the same photo story on my website. Alright, let's go back to the tutorial. For example, you want to clone out this red box from the wall, right? And I will create new layer and you can use a stamp tool for that. Clone stamp tool, alright? And maybe you can sample this part here and now you want to clone it. But we have the problem because this is in a perspective and as you can see here, those bricks are bigger and it's not in a perspective. It doesn't follow this, this line here. If we undo that and try to clone maybe something from upper part here and just put it like so, you can see that this is not in a perspective actually. This will be great if we move it all the way up here somewhere and we can find the right match like so. But here it's completely wrong, the direction and angle. Right, and how to do that? Really, really easy and to be perfect. Well, for that we will use vanishing point filter. First, let's create an empty layer like you will normally do with your uh, stamp clone tool and go to the filter and go to the vanishing point. The shortcut is Alt-Control-V Alt or uh, Command-Option-V, okay? And now we are here in a vanishing filter. That's nice. Let's make this a little bit bigger like so. And we have few options here. The first available option is to create a plane. We now need to create a grid plane, the perspective plane. That will be our helper for uh, cloning in a perspective or painting in a perspective, etc, etc. Right, first let's use this tool. Let's create the first dot here, first point, and then just create a few more, three more, we need four, right? Something like so, and that's nice. And now the line is red, that's great because it's actually wrong. You don't need a red line, but it's great because we can see what we can do now. We can move those corners to have a blue line because now it's not in the right perspective. When the line is blue, like so, that's nice. And now you have more points here. The middle points here are to make this grid bigger. You can make it smaller or bigger, like so maybe. You can stretch it all the way down the hole like so or make it smaller, depend of uh, what part of the image you want to uh, retouch and you have a few options here. You have a grid size for example, that's the density of the grid. If it's bigger it's less dense and if it's smaller it's grid is dense but grid size is smaller, something like so. Alright, I will leave it something like 440, alright? And now as you can see those lines are perfectly follow the brick lines, alright? And that's great. And now if we want to clone this, we just need to go to the clone, the stamp tool. And we have a few options here. We have diameter, it's the size of the tool. I will leave all the way up because that's really good. Uh, we cannot see the tool now, but we, if we press Alt or Option key and sample some point, maybe this point here. And now we can see the, the size of the brush. All right, we have the hardness. I want really soft brush. If I put all the way up, you can see the brush is hard, but I want soft brush to better blend with this red box, all right? And we have the opacity and we have heal option. If we put off, then we uh, will use that as a regular clone stamp tool. If we put to luminance or on, we will use it as a healing brush, something like so, all right? And now we can sample with outer option, uh, Key pressed and click on the point that you want to sample and just find 
a match for that maybe here like so and just paint it all over it see and that's it it's perfect we clone this in a perspective and you cannot see that anything is wrong here now if you press ok you can see that you have that on a separate layer before and after before and after of course you can tweak it you can uh, put layer mask here and maybe you want to erase something you don't want like this part here or you want to bring it back etc etc let's let's undo that all right and you can maybe make this part brighter or darker it's normal layer with with our bricks cloned in a perspective and that's really great as you can see this is really really easy and precise method to clone in a perspective now let me show you what you can do more with this vanishing point filter all right if you go back to the filter and vanishing point filter you can see that the grid stays intact and that's really handy option because if you save this document and close the photoshop come back later to the same document you will see that the grid will stays intact all right and let me show you what, what you can do with this grid even more you can make it as i already say longer or shorter or you can even make another grid out of this grid to follow the next perspective in this case the floor by holding control or command key and just put the mouse on this middle point and drag it and as you can see this grid is perfectly follow the floor see those lines how it's really great following the the tiles here the, these lines of the floor floor tiles and if you press and hold again control command you can make another third grid that it follow the train and again the ceiling if you if you want you can make another grid etc let's undo twice and now i will show you how you can rotate this grid for example this floor is not straight maybe it's angled a little bit down or up and you can do that really easily just press and hold alter option key and go to the middle point and rotate it maybe the floor it's in this direction or maybe it's like this and you can tweak that really really nicely so let me now show you let's create a grid for a train and let's leave it like so all right let me show you one handy option let's make these grids a little bit bigger like so and here like so and maybe we can make them longer all the way out of the screen and if you want now you have you can render this grid to be visible in photoshop back to to your document before that let's press ok for now let's create a new empty layer like so and this will be the layer on which we will on which we will render the grid all right let's go back to the filter vanishing point you will see the grid stays intact and you will go here to this small option button and you can see render grids to photoshop check this and press ok and you will see in a moment the grid is rendered in photoshop and this is really handy option for example we will create a new layer below this and maybe make it black and you will see you can see the grid you can draw something in this perspective uh, have a lot of fun with that you can even change the grid color for example let's make it maybe reddish pinkish or yellowish any color you want green something like so and you can really change the saturation change the brightness make it brighter or darker etc and you can have a lot of great options with that all right let's delete for now this we don't need this right and let me show you how you can paste something or draw something on the walls etc let's go to this graffiti document and let's copy it and bring it here like so right and let's create a new empty layer one not twice right and let's now control click to copy this graffiti control command c and control command d to deselect and make it an invisible just hide it right and let's go to the first empty layer go to the vanishing point filter okay and press control command v to paste that to this document to this vanishing point filter and now we can make this a lot smaller control or command t and by holding a shift key to constrain the proportion we can make this a lot smaller like so and now drag it into the document see it's much bigger of course 
and let's make it even smaller like so okay and as you can see it will follow our grids perfectly it will follow this perspective you can put it here or all the way down it will nicely follow the perspective or you can put it on this wall but now as you can see it's mirrored and we can fix this really easily just go to the middle point and drag it like so and now it's better and of course we can make this even smaller oops sorry 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 all right let's make it smaller by dragging this What's happening? I don't know. Let's make it first smaller. Something happens really strange. All right. That's nice. And we can press OK. And now you will see that this will be perfectly placed in a perspective on the wall. And we can put that maybe in a linear burn blending mode as a graffiti on the wall or maybe in overlay, etc. We can change the opacity of that and so on. All right. Let's create a new layer and let's go back to the vanishing point filter. Control Alt V or Command Option V on the keyboard. It's a shortcut. And now let me show you what you can do with the marquee tool here. This is really nice option too. You can use marquee tool to select anything as you would normally select something in Photoshop. For example, we will select this thing on the floor, right? And we can hold Alt or Option key to drag that and have a copy of that part somewhere here right and we can choose this option to off to make it like a clone of that or on to have as a healing brush as you will copy it with a healing brush all right we can place it here or one all the way down or we can even place one over here like so let me see etc now we can press ok and we will have this in a new layer of course you can now go here create a layer mask and erase maybe something that you don't like here or you can make this uh, brighter or darker or you can erase this completely maybe we don't like this etc etc but it's really nice and handy option to know to use it right let's create another layer and go back to the vanishing point and now let's use a brush tool and that's really nice because you have all options here, the size of the brush, the hardness of the brush, opacity, and to be like normal brush or to have a healing option. Let me show you the healing option. It's not so interesting, but wait a few seconds for Photoshop to render that. Um, maybe you cannot see in a video, but you can see this maybe. It's not so interesting for the brush. We will leave this to off and you can change the brush color. Maybe put it on the red. And now you can paint in perspective. As you can see, it's really nice. You can create some artwork in a perspective or you can go even down here and to paint on the floor. And as you can see, you can paint on a wall here, etc., etc. And when you're finished, you can press OK and you will have this on a separate layer. And that's really, really nice option. Let's delete that for now. There are a lot of applications to use this vanishing point filter and to achieve really creative results. All you need is a little bit of practice to get used to this vanishing point filter. There is one handy tool in the vanishing point filter and it's called Ruler. So let me show you that. All right, let's go back to the vanishing point filter and here you have a measure tool or ruler, right? And if we click on that and put one point here and another point right here, we have some numbers here that doesn't mean anything to us until we type something here. And for example, I know that this is three and a half meters wide and I will type three and a half meters, all right? And you can type anything three and a half. It can, it can be meters or feet or anything else. Just you need to know what this number represents to you, all right? For me, this is three and a half meters. And now I can go to this grid and see how high is this wall, all right? From the bottom to the top, it's almost 4 meter, 3.79, 3.8 meters. And so on, you can see the how long this wall is or how high this train is. It's 3 meters high, etc, etc. It's really handy tool to use sometimes. All right. Let me show you now another example how you can use a vanishing point filter to clone a window from one wall to another wall. So let's do that. All right, guys, for this example, I will use this image that I shoot it in France. Uh, it's Papal Palace in uh, Avignon, and it's really, really tricky perspective. And we will try to 
copy this window on this wall. And if you try to do that manually, it can be done. Everything can be done manually, but it's a little bit harder. And with the vanishing point tool, this is really easy and fast. So let's create a new empty layer and go to the filter and vanishing point tool, All right? And now we need to create first vanishing point, like so maybe, and vanishing plane, sorry, not point. And that's not bad, let me see. It's really, really nice. And we can hold control command key and move it all the way here. Let me see if I make this grid a lot denser just to see the lines. It's not bad. Yeah, everything is nice here. Okay. And I will just move this grid all the way here because we want to use this window and to copy it all the way here. We don't need this part of the image at all. Right, let's use the clone stamp tool and let's use the heal for that. Right, alt or option key to sample the part and now we will put this window over here like so. And wait a moment, Photoshop to render it, nice. And again, we can sample it and we can place another window all the way down like so. And as you can see, it will automatically be bigger because Photoshop will clone that in a perspective. And that's really faster and easier than to do that manually. And if we press OK now, you can see in a second that we have that on a separate layer and this upper part, it's even lighter. It's on the sun. That's really, really great. Of course, you can tweak that a little bit if you want and uh, dodge it or burn it at etc etc that's but it's really really nice and easy and great result to do that all right guys that would be it for today i hope that you like this tutorial and that you learn something new out of it remember that vanishing point filter it's really powerful tool in photoshop get used to use it whenever you have something to clone paste or paint in a perspective this is really fast and easy way to do that just practice and you will master it of course, if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below and I will be glad to answer them. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye bye.